we'll now go ahead and look at prepared statements in PDO and what prepared statements are. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll first start with a query that we uh, may use to insert data into our database. Uh, we'll do a basic insert statement and we'll see the result inside of our database. And then we'll talk a little bit about how it's not ideal, um, particularly when user defined values are um, in the mix. So for example, if a user was to be posting something into a forum or uh, posting a message to another user, you're, you're using user supplied data um, inside of a query. So let's go ahead and look at how this might work. So we'll create a variable called SQL um, and, a, and uh, we'll create a query within here because this can be quite a long query. So this is basically going to be um, inserting into the guestbook table and we will define the fields that we want to supply. That's uh, name, message, and posted. And then we'll define the values that we want to insert here. So in this case, it's going to be uh, Joshua, for example, test, and the now function in MySQL, which just will basically set the date time to the current date and time. So now what we would usually do is we would say a handler query SQL. So we use the handler, which is the open connection to uh, MySQL. And then we uh, perform a query using the query method. We pass the SQL string in. And when we go ahead and refresh the page and check our database, that's given us an additional record within our table. So we don't want that. We don't want to do that because here, let's say we wanted these to be user defined. So we wanted these to come from um, a post request to the page. So um, as part of the um, HTTP request, we wanted to send across this data, uh, basically a user submitting a form. So any data that isn't trusted, and this could be from any source. So what happens in this case? Well, usually what we would do is perhaps create some variables up here. Uh, this might be name, dollar underscore post, name, and the same thing for message. So it might be message, dollar underscore post, and message. So what you would then do is you would go ahead and you would place them within here. So you would say something like name, message, and that would work in a similar way. So if this data is available, that would work. Um, let's just go and pretend this is the case for now. We don't actually want to set up a form uh, just for the sake of talking about prepared statements. So I'm going to set the name to Joshua and message to test. And in here, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to type in colon name and colon message. Now this is really odd because if I go ahead now and I go ahead and execute this query, you'll see that we get an error. So it says here you have an error in your SQL syntax. Check the manual that corresponds to blah, 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 near uh, near colon name message it doesn't understand when it gets to this point here which is fair enough that you know uh, this isn't valid um, SQL code if you like so why are we doing this well the point here is that we want these two values to be bound to this query rather than popping them straight into the string we want these to be bound to the query now instead of using the query which will remember automatically just execute a query and insert that data, we want to prepare it. Now the difference between preparing and querying is that when you prepare a, an SQL um, string or a query, it won't actually do that query, it won't actually execute that query. So when, if I refresh there, you see that nothing's changed here at all. We don't have any errors because there's no problem with this SQL uh, code. Now, what happens is now is we go ahead and we prepare something, then we execute it. Now, if I go ahead now and execute this, so I might say, um, well, we need to create a variable from this first. So I'm going to say query equals the prepared statement. Now I'm going to say query execute. Now, this is at the point where the query is actually run. And we'll get an error, but we'll get a slightly different error here. We don't have an, an invalid query error. We have invalid parameter number, no parameters were bound. So what does this mean? Well, we've created these parameters here, 
Now what we need to do is bind the values that we want to appear in these parameters place. The reason that we do that is then we're actually project protecting against SQL injection as this data is going in. So inside of execute, what we can do is we can pass an array in here of the data that we want to actually uh, bind to this query. So we've prepared it, we execute it, and we pass the values in bound. So let's um, just pull this down a little bit. So the first is name, and we want to set that to whichever name we want to use, or whichever value we want to use rather, and that's name. So that's this imaginary name here that's coming from a user somewhere. We then have message, and we do exactly the same thing. We apply message to this. So now what's going to happen is we execute this, passing in this array of these of these values, which will then bind to these values here because we've defined the same uh, properties here, and then that will actually execute and run the query with them date with that data in there. So when I refresh now, nothing happens over in my database. That data has been inserted. So the point of this really is that you want to prepare a statement with the values that you want to insert then you want to bind the values and execute the statement. So there's an alternative way of doing this, a sort of shorter way of doing this if required, and that's just using question marks for the um, for the values. Now this is um, this is sort of less less sort of immediately obvious, but if we say array name message all this is going to do is it's saying the first element of this array is going to be bound to the first question mark and the second element of this array is going to be bound to the second question mark and we get exactly the same result here when we refresh we see that we get another uh, record insert with Joshua and test so that's basically how that uh, how it works with preparing um, and executing statements in uh, PDO